This video is made possible thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash aficionadoschris if you'd like to help fund future content and receive exclusive rewards. Hey everybody, Aficionados Chris here, and welcome to the Collector's Compendium, a variation of the usual physical media reviews, where instead of solely focusing on one, we'll be examining a variety of home video releases all from the same franchise. And today, we're going to be kicking off this inaugural installment by highlighting a long-running Japanese cult classic, Lupin the Third. What is Lupin the Third, many of you are probably asking? And why are we going to be talking about it? All will be revealed, but first, a little history. In 1965, manga artist Kazuhiko Kato was discovered by the editor for the publishing company Futabasha to create his own manga, assigning him with the pen name Monkey Punch, a nom de plume that Kato-san himself greatly disliked, but kept it thinking he would only have to use it for a few months for just one project. Two years later, this project would later culminate to be Lupin III. Kato-san's action comedy series was a multicultural fusion of inspiration, merging the stories of French authors Maurice Leblanc's Arsene Lupin with illustrations similar to Mort Drucker of Mad Magazine fame. But we'll come back to Leblanc specifically later. The franchise follows the titular character of Lupin III, the grandson of the fictional thief. He, along with his associates, the superhuman sharpshooter Daisuke Jigen, Goemon, a samurai who wields Zentetsuken, the strongest blade in the world, and Fujiko Mine, his on-and-off flame who's more interested in stealing treasures for herself than commitment. Meanwhile, Lupin and his gang are endlessly pursued by Inspector Zenigata, a detective from Interpol whose goal in life is to arrest Lupin at any cost. To Kato-san's surprise, the series soon became a massive success, with its charming, if albeit simple, cast of characters and plots. With this, Lupin has withstood the test of time for nearly half a century, inspiring more than 50 different media adaptations. And today, we're exploring those adaptations, explaining their overall significance, and which ones I recommend that you check out for yourself. Now before we begin, I want to lay down a few ground rules. One, only English-friendly releases will be covered. If I were to include all the various Japanese, Italian, and other international copies out there, this video would take much longer to make. Also, I say English-friendly and not American releases because one of the Blu-rays we're going to be spotlighting is only available in Australia, so keep that in mind. Two, for convenience, I'll be referring to all these titles by their English names. And for entries that haven't been released here in the States just yet, I'll be sourcing their names from a recently released press kit from Lupin the Third the First. Three. Unsurprisingly, I'm not Japanese. So if I mess up anything in the attempt to pronounce words or names, I apologize in advance. I'm doing the best I can. And finally, any and all anecdotes I mention are sourced from whatever website I could find that covered the subject. So if any information happens to be incorrect, please understand that I'm working with whatever I can find. I will put corrections in the video description if I need to. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Our adventure begins here. This era included a total of six entries, two anime series, three theatrical films, and one pilot. To date, this is the only period where absolutely everything is commercially available in North America. The first adaptation of Kazuhiko Kato's manga was an animated pilot produced in 1969. It was created to stir up interest for a series among investors, and thus, not really meant to be seen by the general public. Two versions of this adaptation exist, the original CinemaScope pilot and the TV version. Both are nearly identical with the only major change being the voice cast. Both versions of this pilot are available on the 2012 DVD collection Lupin III The Complete First TV Series. This set was reissued two years later omitting a lot of the bonus content and containing only one version of the pilot. So be sure to track down this version if you want to own both of them. And this is probably as good a time as any to segue over into talking about Lupin the Third Part 1. Part 1 ran from 1971 to 1972 for a total of 23 episodes. And unfortunately, this series suffered from both low ratings and many behind-the-scenes problems. Lupin would later re-enter the public eye through the wonderful world of motion pictures. And believe it or not, the first feature film adaptation of Lupin would not be animated. This is Strange Psychokinetic Strategy from 1974. 
I'm not quite sure what the general consensus is for this one, but personally, I actually really like this movie. It definitely leans more towards screwball comedy than action, which you need to balance carefully if you want to make a truly great Lupin flick. I find it to be extremely funny akin to Monty Python or It's a Mad 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 World, which happens to be my cup of tea. So naturally, I love this movie as a comedy in its own right as opposed to a Lupin adaptation. Now to quickly come back to Lupin Part 1 for just a second. Despite the initial broadcast failing to grab any viewers, the show found newfound appreciation through syndication. This helped to produce a second anime series, Lupin the Third, Part 2. Part 2 ran from 1977 to 1980 for a grand total of 155 episodes, making it to date the longest running anime series in the franchise's history. All 155 episodes have been released on DVD in four volumes. As far as the television series go, I would highly suggest that you check this one out. With that being said, only 81 of the 155 episodes were ever dubbed in English. Episodes 1 to 79 were dubbed by Genion and aired on Adult Swim in 2003, while the Hayao Miyazaki directed episodes Wings of Death, Albatross, and Farewell My Beloved Lupin were dubbed by Streamline Pictures in 1993, and those dubs are included in this DVD set. Next up, we have the first animated Lupin feature film, 1978's The Mystery of Mamo. Mamo was Kato-san's personal favorite of the Lupin films, which isn't surprising considering Mamo is one of the more faithful adaptations of the original manga. Now, your mileage may vary as to whether that is a good or bad thing, but I really like this movie because of it. Mamo also happens to be the one Lupin installment with the most English dubs produced. There's a Toho dub, a Manga UK dub, a Streamline Pictures dub, and finally, a Genion dub. And all four of them are included in this Discotech DVD. Now before we move on, it's very important to note that this film contains flashing light sequences that may induce epileptic seizures in some. Neither the film nor the DVD mention this anywhere, so proceed with caution. And Discotech, if you plan to ever reissue this film on Blu-ray or even 4K, please include a warning about this. And finally, we have the most highly acclaimed and recognizable Lupin adaptation of all time, Hayao Miyazaki's The Castle of Cagliostro from 1979. It's very easy to see why, in the West at least, Cagliostro has made such a big impact. It's a lighthearted adventure flick with a charming cast of characters. Many, including Kato-san himself, consider this a great film, but not necessarily a great Lupin film. As a fan, I partially agree, but I adore it just the same. There are plans for Discotech to re-release this film on 4K UHD in the near future. I'll be covering that one individually once it's out. Bet you didn't know, but in 1983, footage from both Mystery of Mamo and Castle of Cagliostro was repurposed for the arcade game Cliffhanger, an interactive movie game in the vein of Dragon's Lair or Space Ace. The game's cabinet even made an appearance in the 1985 cult classic, The Goonies. Its inclusion in the film has caused many to speculate that Steven Spielberg, the film's producer, was a fan of Cagliostro and had the machine featured as a nod to the film. This rumor has gained so much popularity that a supposed quote from Spielberg was printed on the front of the 2006 manga DVD, calling it one of the greatest adventure movies of all time. This quotation has no verified source. We've entered the 80s and 90s now with 16 new titles, one anime series, three theatrical films, 11 television specials, and one OVA. All of these have been released with the exception of the anime series Lupin the Third Part 3, which ran for 50 episodes from 1984 to 1985. When Part 3 aired in Japan, it was very poorly received, which might explain why it hasn't made its way to DVD here in the States. At least, not yet. After the series' short run, another animated film was released, The Legend of the Gold of Babylon, which hit Japanese cinemas in 1985. This unfortunately shared the same fate as Part 3 and received a mixed reception upon release. Now for the series' first OVA, The Fuma Conspiracy, released in 1987. And this is the very definition of a mixed bag. 
You see, due to budgetary constraints, TMS, the company that owns and operates all the Lupin projects, could not afford their usual cast members. Instead, they hired cheaper actors to cut costs. This caused a massive fan backlash, and as a result, the OVA failed to be the financial success they were hoping for. These continued missteps caused a brief dilemma about what to do with the franchise going forward. Nevertheless, TMS still commissioned a feature-length TV special, Bye Bye Lady Liberty. This proved to be very successful, and yearly TV specials would continue to be produced for over two decades. The next three specials would be The Hemingway Papers, Napoleon's Dictionary, and From Siberia with Love all three of which have been released on DVD, as you can see, by Discotech. Another eight specials and two theatrical films would be released by Funimation in 2003. These included Voyage to Danger, Dragon of Doom, Farewell to Nostradamus, The Pursuit of Hari Mao's Treasure, Dead or Alive, The Secret of Twilight Gemini, Island of Assassins, Crisis in Tokyo, The Columbus Files, and Missed by a Dollar. Now bear with me with this period because there's a lot to unpack here. When Funimation originally issued these on DVD, they were available individually, or you could get them in two collector's edition DVD box sets, the first haul and the final haul. Now a major downside with these would be the formatting of the films themselves. Both Farewell to Nostradamus and Dead or Alive are in non-anamorphic widescreen. If you don't know what that means, picture if you will that this video looked like this the entire time. Yeah, that'd be a little irritating, wouldn't it? Both the box sets and the individual releases are long out of print, and I honestly wouldn't recommend that you hunt them down. Especially not these box sets, because I've seen just one of these sell upwards of $100. And trust me, it isn't worth it. Not only are these poor releases by modern home video standards, but Discotech has been steadily reissuing a lot of them on Blu-ray. So far, the ones that have been reprinted are Voyage to Danger, Dragon of Doom, and Island of Assassins. The Pursuit of Hari Mouse Treasure and The Secret of Twilight Gemini are scheduled to receive Blu-ray represses in October and November of this year. Crisis in Tokyo, under the name Tokyo Crisis, will also receive a Blu-ray in 2021. I'll be sure to review them individually when they're released. <laughs> Bet you didn't know, when Kazuhiko Kato created the original manga, he did not obtain permission to use the Arsene Lupin name. During the initial run, Japan did not impose trade copyrights, so gaining approval from the Leblanc estate was not required. However, when Lupin was licensed internationally, many countries, including North America, could not use the name of the fictional French thief. Studios would use alternate names such as Wolf or Rupin to get around these legal limitations when dubbing the franchise. Eventually though, Arsene Lupin fell into the public domain, meaning the rapscallion could be referred to by his original moniker once again. And now my friends, we've reached the end of the catalog. However, this is Lupin the Third we're talking about, a franchise that's been going strong for over half a century, so this is far from over. As of this video's creation, there are currently three anime series, six feature films, 17 TV specials, and four OVAs. And of these entries, only 15 of them are available on physical media. The recent 3D CG film, Lupin the Third the First, is planned to have a home video release sometime soon by G-Kids. I'll be covering that when it's available, but I only bring this up so that my comment section isn't flooded with people accosting me for not mentioning it. Anyway, let's finish this lineup. TMS continued to do annual TV specials until 2013 when production started to slow down. Of these, the ones that are available on DVD and Blu-ray are Alcatraz Connection, Episode Zero, The First Contact, Operation Return the Treasure, The Last Job, Blood Seal of the Eternal Mermaid, and Goodbye Partner, all of them courtesy of Discotech. Episode Zero was created to commemorate 30 years of Lupin III and is easily the best of the bunch with some of the coolest moments in the franchise's history. This era also saw two of the biggest anime franchises collide, not once, but twice, with Lupin III vs. Detective Conan the special and Lupin III vs. Detective Conan the movie. Now, I would really only recommend these to two kind of people, Detective Conan fans and hardcore Lupin III completionists, which as you can probably tell, 
on the latter. Along with that was another major event, the first Lupin anime series to be broadcast since the 80s. That being, The Woman Called Fujiko Mine. And as the name would suggest, this series focuses more on Fujiko than it does Lupin. For that reason, it's not a personal favorite of mine. But I do greatly admire the expressive animation and striking visuals in the show. If you're thinking of picking up this series, I would recommend that you steer clear of the Funimation release because not only is it out of print and going for outrageous amounts of money right now, but Discotech recently announced that they are reissuing The Woman Called Fujiko Mine on Blu-ray in 2021. I'll compare the two versions in their own video next year. Fujiko Mine's success brought forth its own trilogy of films in the same style, with Jigen's Gravestone, Goyaman's Blood Spray, and Fujiko's Lie. I've heard many refer to these films as the Koikeverse, given that the creative director and character designer is Takeshi Koike. My favorite of the three would have to be Goyamon's Blood Spray. The fight sequences and animation are absolutely top-notch. The Koike films are also a lot more graphic than most Lupin adaptations, so depending on your tolerance level, I would take this into consideration before viewing them. Of the OVAs, so far only one has made it to the States. That being... Green vs. Red, a commemorative direct-to-video release celebrating 40 years of Lupin III. I can only recommend this to people who are more versed with the franchise, since most of the appeal is in all the easter eggs and homages sprinkled throughout. We also got yet another live-action adaptation. This sophomore attempt was directed by one of my favorite Japanese filmmakers, Ryuhei Kitamura. Known to kaiju fans for directing Godzilla Final Wars, and to foreign film enthusiasts for his breakout indie flick, Versus. Given that this is an adaptation of one of my favorite franchises, directed by one of my favorite filmmakers, you'd think that this would be a match made in heaven. Well, sadly, some things are just not meant to be. Because this movie is a mess. It is riddled with abhorrent editing, unnecessary characters, and a sluggish runtime. I will give credit where credit is due, because the core cast does a phenomenal job playing their respective roles, especially the actor who plays Zenigata. He steals the show for me. Right now, the only English version out there is the Australian Blu-ray from Eastern Eye, which also happens to be Region B locked. So unless you're a crazy completionist like I am, I wouldn't bother importing this. Sorry for my harsh words, Kitamura-sama. I greatly admire your work, but this just didn't do it for me. Now back to more positive entries, with Lupin III Part 4. Here we have the English language dub and the original Japanese on Blu-ray from Discotech. The first thought that's probably entered your mind is, why are these two separate sets instead of having the audio options in one set? Well, because there's actually a very unique situation for that. You see, Part 4 aired in Italy long before Japan. This is due to Lupin having immense popularity over there. So they managed to acquire their own exclusive series. But when it was finally broadcast in Japan, they made a few alterations, including new opening and closing sequences, and franchise staple composer Yuji Ono returning to score the soundtrack. Because of these alterations, the Italian and Japanese versions have to be treated as two separate entities. As a result, when TMS licensed Part 4 to the United States for dubbing, they were handed the Italian version, Hence, why there are two Blu-ray editions. Bet you didn't know how much Nidia was inspired by Lupin III, in both the East and the West. Castle of Cagliostro's famous clock tower fight scene is said to have influenced similar sequences in Disney's The Great Mouse Detective and Batman, the animated series. On the Eastern side, Lupin's impact was strong enough to be a direct inspiration for one of the most influential animes of all time, Cowboy Bebop. Shinichiro Watanabe credited Masaki Osumi's directional work on the original 1971 series as a heavy influence. The Bebop connections would not stop there, though. Spike Spiegel's voice actor, Koichi Yamadera, would eventually assume the role of Inspector Zinigata after Goro Nara's retirement from portraying him in 2012. And with that, that's every single Lupin the Third home video release to date. So now the question is, from the collection I've dissected, which one should I recommend you watch? Well, when it comes to the anime series, there are three I highly recommend, depending on your preference. Well, if you don't mind reading English subtitles, no better start than the original 1971 series, 
Especially since it's always good to see where a franchise like this got its humble beginnings. However, if you'd rather watch something more concise and fully dubbed, you can't go wrong with part four. But my personal favorite's always going to be part two, but given that it's a rather long series and only half of it was ever dubbed, this could be a tougher sell. But if you can get over that, it's a great watch. For the feature films, I'm obviously going to highly recommend Castle of Cagliostro, not just for the Lupin connection, but because it is a magnificent film in its own right and everyone should see it once in their life. Mystery of Mamo is my top pick for people who want to get a better grasp of Lupin as a franchise. And when it becomes available, I highly recommend everyone see Lupin the Third the First. It is unbelievably good. When it comes to specials and OVAs, despite its flaws, the Fuma Conspiracy is still a great piece of Lupin the Third media. Episode Zero The First Contact is, in my opinion, the greatest special in the series history, and I believe this is a great segue into the franchise. If any of these titles have piqued your interest, I have links in the video description that will take you to the official Discotech eBay store and write stuff where you can purchase some of these releases. I also recommend that you support Discotech by following them on Twitter. They did not sponsor me for this video, I'm just a very loud advocate that supports the amazing work that they do. That's all I have to say about the Lupin the Third franchise. I hope you enjoyed going on this adventure with me, and please have a wonderful day. Toodles! Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Did you enjoy what you saw and you want to see more? All right, well then click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified for upcoming videos. Oh, uh, be sure to like and comment as well. And if you're really generous, you can support the channel through Patreon.